Who runs your container process? I'm not talking about your cloud provider or Kubernetes, not even the DevOps engineer that sits down the hall. I'm talking about your operating system user. Now, is it root, an application user? If you didn't specify in the Docker file, the answer is actually C, root. An astonishing 58% of people in a recent survey said that they're running their container processes as root. Now, you wouldn't normally do this if you were running on a bare metal server or a VM, but the container scenario is a little bit different. So let's take a look at what's going on. There are three layers to consider. The host operating system runs the container engine as a given user. Then the container process gets run as a user within the namespace of the container. And finally, that maps back to the host operating system. Wow, this is getting complicated, but why do we care? The principle of least privilege is what is applicable here. You want your application process to have the least amount of permissions that it needs to do its job. Then it can do less damage. This is the concept of blast radius, and you want to limit the blast radius, of course, for obvious reasons. Now, is this an academic concern? You could say, Darren, yeah, this isn't really a problem for me. So let me tell you a scenario. If you have on your container image, any sensitive files or data, you could even set them to be only readable by root. But if you run your container process as root, it now has access to those files. So either intentionally or on purpose, it could grab that data and do whatever it wants with it, expose it, then you're having a bad day. Now, fortunately, there's an easy way to fix this. The Docker file has a command called user that tells the container any subsequent run commands, run those as that user. The default happens to be root. So now you don't have to be one of those 58%. I hope your apps are nice and secure. We'll catch you next time.